my beauties okay it is a quiet saturday night i just got the kids to sleep and i wanted to do a quick youtube video every week i'll post a video topic on dermatology or skincare or any questions or topics that you guys ask me to post about so um leave a comment in the comment section of what you guys want to hear about and i have a whole list of, of topics that i'm going to get to but today what i wanted to talk about is wrinkles and skin laxity and why it happens and how to fix it and I think that this is an important topic because there's so much out there regarding, you know, skincare treatments, active ingredients in skincare uh, products, and and how understanding like what these active ingredients do and what the goal of it is, um, without getting too scientific, um, but by kind of um, keeping it simple and explaining how these active ingredients in skincare can make your skin look its healthiest and its best. And the topic um, for today is mainly just targeting wrinkles and skin laxity and kind of crepey skin that happens over time. So what I always tell my patients is as we gain wisdom and have birthdays, we lose a lot of the collagen and elastin proteins in the skin. And what happens is when we lose these proteins is the skin loses its a tensile strength, its turgor, and it basically becomes laxed and crepey and wrinkly. And sometimes you'll see it less on our face than you do on like our neck, our chest, our arms, our legs, our stomach, other areas, because these areas aren't getting the attention that the skin on our face gets, right? With using things like tretinoin or vitamin A derivatives, uh, medical grade skincare, getting Fraxels or getting Clear and Brilliant or getting laser treatments um, on the face, keeping that skin chock full of collagen and elastin, but kind of ignoring the other areas that aren't getting that TLC and seeing what happens to that skin over time. It becomes crepey, it becomes laxed, and it becomes wrinkled. So understanding what collagen and elastin really are, and also the other extracellular matrix proteins and glycosaminoglycans and hyaluronic acid, these are all things that when you look at kids' skin, they have these nice, full, big, plump cheeks and their skin is tight and they don't have pores and they have a good elasticity. You pitch their cheeks and it just goes right back. So the reason why is because kids and young adults have extracellular matrix proteins that are thick, healthy, viable collagen fibers and elastin fibers mainly. So collagen gives the skin its tensile strength and the lack of collagen causes wrinkly, crepey skin. And Elast the elastin fibers give skin its elasticity and they both work hand in hand to give skin that smooth tight texture so when we lose it we lose that phenomenon and we get the wrinkly crepey skin so when you're talking about skincare products or even laser resurfacing or energy-based devices things that enhance your body's natural ability to synthesize new collagen and elastin that's very important but it's also important to keep that collagen and elastin and all the extracellular matrix fibers healthy over time too and I'll, I'll talk about how to do that as well so just launching my own skincare um, line a couple weeks ago, you'll probably hear me talk about a lot about the ECM or the extracellular matrix. And what does that even mean? So the extracellular matrix is the environment in which the cells are bathed in, they live, they release little chemical signals and growth factors to one another to you know, stimulate cellular renewal or collagen synthesis by fibroblasts. It's kind of like the soup. And if you think if you think of soup, like vegetable soup, for example, the cells are the vegetables and the broth is the extracellular matrix, is the extracellular environment in which the cells live. And it's in that environment that all the collagen and elastin proteins live. And so there, it's synthesized inside the cell and it's exocytosed into the extracellular matrix. And if you look at skin under the microscope, if you look in the dermis, you'll see a lot of these uh, thick, healthy collagen and elastin fibers in healthy skin. And the opposite is true. You know, when I'm doing skin cancer on a patient and I'm doing Mohs and I've had a lot of, um, you know, solar elastosis or um, actinic damage, which is basically just sun damage, all these collagen, thick pink collagen fibers aren't big, thick, rope-like, you know, collagen structures in the skin. They're fragmented, very wispy, dysfunctional, um, degraded collagen. And that correlates to wrinkled skin on sun damaged skin. And so the elastin fibers also, they're not thick, you know, bundles of elastin fibers, they're just these fragmented, um, kind of disoriented, disorganized, non-functional elastin. So although this, when you look at sun damaged skin or wrinkled skin under the microscope, although it does have collagen and elastin, it's just basically non-functional and just little bits and pieces of it. You can think of it as having like a rubber band, like a thick, strong rubber band in the skin or taking a rubber band and cutting it up to hundreds of little pieces. And there's rubber band tissue there, but it's not really functional or it's not serving any purpose. 
So the goal of many skincare active ingredients is to synthesize new collagen and elastin, but another important key factor is to eliminate all the dysfunctional, non-functional collagen and elastin fibers. Get it out of there and, and out with the old, in with the new, literally. And so what happens is, is active ingredients in skincare, you know, products that we use, morning and night, different anti-aging serums, what's important to have is also, you know, in addition to stimulating collagen and elastin, recruitment of inflammatory and um, immune responses to come and just clean that up and replace it with new, fresh, healthy, extracellular matrix proteins. And that over time is how you increase, you know, skin texture, turgor, tensile strength, the smooth contour, the um, reversal of the, the crepey kind of wrinkled skin by gaining those proteins back getting rid of the dysfunctional proteins and replacing them with new, healthy, viable proteins that will work and will make the skin tighter and smoother with a beautiful contour and texture. So many of you may ask, well, how does the collagen and elastin get dysfunctional and degraded and all chopped up and you know dysfunctional in the first place? So lots of things, you know, over time, that's why when I say instead of getting older, we say gain wisdom and have birthdays, you're exposed to a lot more environmental um, insults. For example, ultraviolet light, UVA1, UVB, UVA2, and HEV light emitted from our devices. Every time we're on our you know, laptops or our tablets or our, our phones and you see the blue light coming onto your skin, that's degrading your collagen and elastin, not to scare you or make you neurotic about it, but this is how dermatologists think and this is how I think. You know, I wear sunscreen sometimes at night because I don't want the HEV light from my phones to break down my collagen and my skin and my elastin, and I've done that my whole life. And so I think it's important to understand why why this happens. So not only ultraviolet light from the sun, um, you know, sun exposure, HEV light, but also environmental pollutants that are in the in the atmosphere, no matter where we live or where we go, it's, you know, our skin is in contact with environmental pollutants on a daily basis. And then also foods we eat, you know, toxins that we have to remove through our bodies. These all can cause free radicals in the skin. And what free radicals do is they oxidize and they basically bounce around in the skin and they break up the collagen and elastin fibers. So then what happens? Then you have all these degraded collagen and elastin fibers and your body makes an enzyme called matrix metalloproteinase and it comes and it eats up all the collagen and elastin and degraded fibers and it starts to eat away at the healthy collagen and elastin too. So it's kind of like this positive feedback loop where you're getting damage to your collagen and elastin and then you're also increasing your enzymes to break down the additional collagen and elastin that you actually need and that's why skin can get crepey and wrinkly and kind of weathered over time. So having active ingredients in skincare to reverse that, protect it, and protect further damage from happening is really, really essential. And that's what we're learning um, more and more discoveries every day about these pathways and signal transduction pathways in the skin and how to target them and how to enhance our body's own natural ability to synthesize collagen and elastin and to protect the new collagen and elastin from de getting degraded over time with new active ingredients, new peptides, new antioxidants that have been discovered. So it's really an exciting time in the skincare industry and in dermatology. So there's certain active ingredients that we know have stood the test of time that have immense research and data supporting their effects in the skin. For example, tretinoin. Tretinoin is a prescription strength vitamin A derivative, but it's very well studied in the field of dermatology, not only for anti-aging, but for acne and for a lot of um, genodermatoses and dermatologic conditions like psoriasis and so forth. So what we do know is that tretinoin increases production of collagen, but there's also a lot of active ingredients in addition to the ones that have stood the test of time that have proven to increase synthesis of collagen and elastin in addition to protecting our, our body and our skin from further degradation from enzymes that could be destructive of our new collagen and elastin. And I do an Instagram live um, every Friday so people can ask me questions and I, I love interacting and engaging with everyone and I'm kind of like your personal dermatologist slash scientist slash formulator who's here to answer your questions. And somebody had a really insightful question just a few days ago last week on Friday when I, um, when I was doing a live and she asked, well, how do antioxidants how do antioxidants prevent wrinkles? And I thought that that was such a great question because inadvertently the way antioxidants protect from wrinkle formation is because wrinkles happen from the free radical damage that is elicited by ultraviolet light or sunlight. And the antioxidants, when we say free radical scavengers, that's exactly what they do. They basically go and they bind up all the free radicals before the free radicals have time to degradate all your and destroy all your collagen. So that's the main way of antioxidants. It's an oversimplified way to describe how antioxidants prevent wrinkles, but pretty much that's, that's the long and the short of it.
And this is a little bit different on um, the topic of how ultraviolet light creates skin cancer. So that's kind of a different, this is a multifactorial, multi-step process in the skin. Lots of things going on. And what we know is ultraviolet light, UV, sunlight is bad, but we can protect ourselves and our skin smartly and um, effectively. I mean, I live on the beach. I was on the beach for four hours today watching my sun surf. And, you know, I, you know, constantly reapply my sunscreen. I use active ingredients in my skincare products to protect my skin. So it's not that you can't live your life and be out in the sun and exposed to the environment, but just be sure that you're using smart active ingredients in medical grade skincare and doing laser procedures if you can once in a while, maybe once a year to protect your skin. So I hope this makes sense. And in summary, when you think of the extracellular matrix, the environment in which the cells live in, it's the outside surrounding area filled with collagen and elastin, hyaluronic acid, and a lot of other glycoproteins that gives skin its strength and structure. That gets damaged with several factors, including sunlight and UV damage. And so they need to be restored and prepared and repaired and protected. So that's the main that's the main take home point today. And you know, wearing your sunscreen, reapplying your sunscreen is very important too. And also not only for anti aging but anti skin cancer. You know, as a skin cancer surgeon, you know, I can kind of go into how UV light induces DNA damage, pyrimidine dimers, which sets you up for skin cancer. But that's kind of different than the anti aging pathway and the effects that UV light and free radicals have on. Um, elastin and collagen and extracellular matrix proteins. So, I mean, using good products, protecting your skin with, with sunscreen and reapplying the sunscreen and using smart sunscreen is really important because not only is it important for anti-aging and looking better, it's important for your overall skin health and to decrease the incidence of skin cancer. So I hope this helps you guys and I'm here to answer any questions in the comment section that you guys have and I'm happy to talk about any uh, other topic in dermatology or aesthetics or skincare that you have as well. I love doing this for you guys. I love educating and sharing knowledge and um, hopefully that you'll find this helpful or you could send it to someone who may find it useful as well. Take care.